I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Got a fun video and a great topic uh, for discussion today, which is the new ship that's been released in the devlog, which is the Tier 10 American Destroyer, the USS Hull. And uh, it's going to be really awesome. But in the background video is going to be uh, the Shards Epicenter with the Ragnar, because it's kind of like a comparison I want to do. But uh, as always, before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button below. Appreciate all the supporters of the channel. If you want to be part of the community and help us move along the way, let us know by leaving your comments in the uh, section in the bottom below. Hit the like, subscribe, bell button. And as always, thanks to guys for supporting the channel and making this place a great place to learn and build a good community. So let's get right to it. The tier 10 hull. But actually, before we begin, the Ragnar in the background, more of a long-range gun build. No RPF, which I normally run on my destroyers, as you've seen before. And uh, really just focusing on sheer gun power, firepower, long-range HE spamming and minimizing heals and radars because I've noticed that you know, in my engagements with the Ragnar, I'm not really hunting down destroyers in, per se. Uh, I don't have RPF to figure out where they're at. And as soon as I'm spotted, I'm popping the radar, but the radar doesn't really last long enough for me to melt a destroyer, in my personal opinion, anymore. Uh, back in the day, maybe, you know, taking down small destroyers, maybe. But I find that, actually, my role as a more hybrid, balanced, uh, HE spamming, long-range, uh, kind of miniature cruiser with the Ragnar's great, and the radar is there just as, as a defensive measure if I get spotted when I'm not firing, because most of the time I'm firing in the Ragnar, so really I'm always detected, so it really doesn't matter if I'm going to be spotted by a destroyer or not. The destroyer, the radar in the, is for the, maybe the long game, where there's only maybe a few destroyers left, and you know there's nobody around. Then if I get spotted, I'll then make my engagement. That way, pop the radar, boom, fend off the destroyer, move them away, and then that, that's kind of what I do. The engine boost really is there to juke shells and take a lot, a lot of damage. Trust me, the Ragnar is excellent. It's literally racking up the potential damage, as you're going to see right here. Look, at battleships right there. This is a Ragnar's playground right here, where I'm at 13 to 14 kilometers, which is really difficult for a, a lot of battleship players, as you're going to see in this video, to really shoot the Ragnar, especially when I'm juking, throttle jocking, and everything. And really, just this HE spamming monster is pretty ridiculous. So that's the background video for it. Let me know what you think about it later on. But uh, yeah, we're going to open up on the GK. But we'll talk about a little bit, as you're enjoying the video in the background, the USS Hull. And uh, it's pretty much, if just TLDR, the biggest thing is it's a four Sherman with Des Moines caliber guns. Yes, you heard it right there. They're going to put cruiser level caliber guns uh, on a small destroyer uh, package. And it is, oh my gosh, I really want to get this thing now. But then again, I'm asking the question, is this where Wargaming wants to go? Where, Like I said, I, I'm afraid. You know, and I'm not saying Battleship playing is dead, per se. I'm just saying Battleship uh, play in randoms is more obsolete in the sense because you just basically got everything just stacking up against a Battleship player. You've got long-range HE spamming, you've got subs, you've got carriers, and even, I have to say, some cruisers that just have massive amounts of HE DPM. As you can see right here, here's the Battleship player's play is really just getting spammed and spotted from miles away, getting torped, getting HE spammed, and if there's a plane and, and a carry in the game, it's really... Uh, uh, you know, not not very enjoyable for a battleship player. Look this, look at this GK. Is he having fun? He's flooding. He's got HE spamming on him. He, he, if there was an aircraft carrier in here, and if there's a submarine hunting him, it really isn't as enjoyable as it used to be. Now, battleship play is still fun in ranked, uh, maybe clan battles and cots and so forth. I still think that there is a game for battleships in that sense, but I would hope that they would not try to you know, delete uh, or make obsolete battleship play for a ship that I started playing battleships in, and I, I enjoyed it, but nowadays it's very, very difficult to do much uh, as a battleship player. And, and this is just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, absolutely. I love to hear it. Everybody has an opinion, and that's great to hear about it. It's open to for discussion. But let's get back to it. American Destroyer Hull. Hypothetical design, like I already said, TLDR, it's a four Sherman with cruiser caliber guns. Hypothetical design of complete rearmament of USS Hull, four Sherman class ashore, as we talked about earlier, with the advanced 203 Mark 71 guns. Developed in the 1970s under the major caliber lightweight gun program, USS Hull entered service in 1958 and had the Mark 71 prototype installed in the bow position. So this actually did exist. So I'll, I'll throw some pictures up and everything like that. 1975-1979, uh, pretty darn awesome. Uh, we'll look at the stats in a minute. Uh, some varieties of destroyers in our game are often called gunboat destroyers, as you can see in the background here with the Ragnar. Likened to cruiser in, uh, cruisers in playstyle, Hull takes this uh, concept to the extreme. While technically a sister ship of the four Sherman, Hull instead mounts three single 203mm guns with characteristics similar to those found on Des Moines. 
So, kind of, man, got Des Moines guns on a small uh, destroyer. While her damage per minute is mediocre, which, well, I may have to say, I'll have to challenge that. Uh, mediocre, you guys let me know when you find out the stats on this thing. In mediocre due to the small number of barrels. Okay, small number of barrels. The high fire chance penetration of her HE shells will allow her to deal damage more reliably than her lower caliber peers. Now, when she says lower caliber, are you saying, like, look, look at Ragnar. We have 150-ish guns. Let me see. What are the guns on the, the Ragnar? Are they only 151? Let's take a look. Uh, 152. You got the Elbing that's got racking up 150s there. You got the Tromp who's got 150 plus caliber guns. So you got the big boy caliber guns at uh, those kind of uh, levels of destroyer. But this thing is packing cruiser level. So that's that's pretty wild. Uh, let's see here. Additionally, improved ricochet angles will allow hold to surprise enemy cruisers with AP salvos. Wow. Improved ricochet angles. Am I like that? While she does not have access to long-range torpedoes that are similar to the four Sherman. Now, four Sherman are still long-range, uh, but they just have extremely restricted in terms of la launch arc. So, they're again, they're probably the four Sherman, you know, single-launch torpedoes that are, you know, only four of them, but they go a long distance, and, uh, man, when they hit you, they hit you hard. When it comes to survivability, hold large size, poor concealment, and low speed will be significant drawbacks. Again, kind of like the Sherman. However, she boasts access to an array of improved consumable, uh, consumables, a repair party with increased healing. I like that. Engine boost with similar characteristics found on the French destroyers. Hmm, interesting. Probably a lot of juking right there. An improved defensive AA fire. A, so AA is trash, whatever. Um, they kind of have that on the Sherman. I don't really like the AA on the Sherman either. Uh, in battle, let's see here. At hull acts as a formidable second line destroyer. So kind of like the Ragnar where you're kind of in the middle, mid to mid, the long range where you're supporting your destroyers or maybe even trying to push yourself. While she will perform poorly in roles directly contesting capture uh, points and enemy destroyers, her main battery poses a significant threat to enemy ships, like what I've been doing right here in the background. A bit, essentially, a big HE spamming, annoying kind of a thing, right? Similar to Elbing, like we already talked about, Hull will perform best when firing AP into the broadsides of unsuspecting enemies. Okay, so they might be focusing a lot on the... Um, I would say AP, they're, uh, they're trying to. I mean, it's Des Moines caliber guns, and you know Des Moines is very, very powerful AP, you know, heavy damage from the American uh, line. So I'm kind of curious how that's going to play, and I'm kind of curious of the rate of fire and the sound of the guns. That's going to be really interesting here. Uh, I already like the sound of Ragnar guns, as you can see in the background. Pretty darn awesome, but uh, I'm, I'm really curious. I'm definitely going to get this no matter what. I have to do the review on this. I have to get it for you guys, and it's going to be awesome. My play style will probably be similar to what you're seeing in the background. Ragnar, Elbing, Tromp, kind of style level of gunplay um pretty darn wild and awesome so let's see here uh, let's look at the statistics here and i'll throw up screenshots uh let's see here american tier 10 american destroy hull hit points twenty four thousand nine hundred. so if you're adding a little bit more to that you're probably you know pushing around you know maybe like druid levels like 27 000, 28 range somewhere around there plating is 19 millimeters so again four sherman uh, you know, standard kind of that main uh, main kind of build right there. So nothing too cosmic. Main battery we already talked about. The range starting range is 12.3. So if you build for it, I do believe you could probably get this thing out to the, the ranges you're seeing in the background here. Maybe the 14 to 15 kilometer ranges. So again, that long range HE spamming kind of thing. HE shell damage 2800. Let's see what does the what's the Ragnar do? Ooh, Holland caught me open there. 2200, 2200 HE. So the HE on this is 2,800, so a little bit more. Uh, you can see what this Ragnar is doing against this Holland. Okay, this is the level of gameplay for these big caliber sh uh, destroyer guns, and man, you are just melting destroyers, and that's why I really enjoy the gameplay of Ragnar and Elbing and so forth. Let's see here. Armor penetration, 34 millimeters on the HE. Goodness gracious. So this thing is going to be melting cruisers and hopefully uh, start a lot of fires and battleships. Let's see here. What is this? I have 30 mil pen on the, um, the Ragnar. So it's not going to get that threshold of 35 millimeter, uh, that most, uh, or what is it? Yeah, I think it's 35 millimeters, one of the strong points. 32 millimeters is going to be easy to pen with these 34 millimeter guns. Yeah, I think 34 mil should handle the majority of the cruisers and battleships that we are dealing with. I mean, the, I know a lot of the cruisers and uh, battleships, the front bow and everything are around 32 mil and below. So 34 millimeters sounds just fine for me. Chances to cause fires, 14%. Holy crap. 14% chance of fires. HE velocity, 899 meters per second. So very fast caliber guns coming out. This is 900 meters per second. So essentially same speed as the Ragnars. 
Um, Elbing's a little, I believe, is a little faster. AP shell damage, 4,900. 4,900 on the AP shell damage. I'm going to have to see the ricochet angles. They don't surely show it right now in the dev blogs, but uh, curious to see what kind of ri improved ricochet angles they're talking about. Maybe around that 75 degree mark, where like kind of like with the Druid and the Daring, kind of uh, around that, you know, the British kind of style AP. That would be pretty interesting. Reload time, three seconds. Oh my god. So three seconds is already what we get on... Actually, the base reload on the Ragnar was slightly higher than three seconds. If they're saying the base reload on this is three seconds, uh, which may be nerfed, you can get this thing down way lower. I, I, I would say near the two-second range time frame where we can get it maybe mid-two seconds and then an adrenal, an adrenaline rush is kicking in, Fearless Brawler. Uh, if you can build for main battery, pretty pretty darn good, actually. This is fast-firing, big-caliber guns. I like this a lot. 180-degree turn time, six seconds, not bad. Sigma 2.0, very good. Uh, depth charges? Let's see here. I don't really care about depth charges. Who cares? Uh, torpedoes, again, same as the... Um, the four Sherman, uh, four by one, five thirty-three millimeter max damage, seventeen thousand nine hundred range, sixteen point five. So again, these are not short range; these are long range torpedoes. But you only get four of them, and the reload time is seventy-three seconds. So pretty darn fast reloads. Just terrible uh, angled. Now here's a question though: it has down here. It says launcher one hundred eighty degree turn time is seven point two seconds. What does that? Oh, so this must be a four by one so there is a maybe these are sync these are four tubes put together on one and that means there's a 180 degree turn uh, radius so 7.2 seconds that means this thing is not like the sherman where in the sense it has single torpedo launchers which they're you know basically locked into those arc angles but these torpedo launchers apparently have turn time so it, it must be one single four by one single launcher so pretty interesting here right? it's a lot better than four sherman than i thought for torpedo that is Rather than I have to get those restricted arc angles. Uh, AA is trash. We're not talking about that. Maximum speed, 33.9. So on the slow end, the rudder shift, surface turning radius would probably be the standard of sort for Sherman. And let's see here. Uh, what else? Uh, slot one, damage party. Slot two, specialized repair teams. I do like that. So a little bit increased repair time. So this thing is going to be annoying. Uh, three slot engine boost and defensive a fire so that's the um that this is really interesting i'm going to be looking forward to getting this ship so when it comes out let's see what it's going to be probably for research bureau if it's going to be this powerful so i'm going to really be really really um surprised if this thing is anything lower than like maybe coal or you know doubloons it's probably going to be something locked behind a paywall probably like steel or doubloons or maybe even uh, research bureau so uh, that's my thought on the whole i really think it's going to be powerful i think it's going to be strong pretty awesome you guys let me know what you think about this uh, and you can see it on the dev blog i'll put a link in the description below read about it and see what you think of the whole but it's definitely going to be powerful <laughs> i don't know if it's going to be good for the game but we'll definitely see but here is the background you see ragnar just destroying and demolishing everything One hundred fifty-two thousand damage two kills eight fires and we did a lot of the capturing and spotting for our team and sierra and we are probably number one yep number one i mean look at the power of what little one little destroyer that's focusing on gunpowder does. I didn't really contest the center really that much. I was really just trying to melt as many battleships as I can and take out their cruisers. And then the destroyers were kind of a, a bonus uh, if you wanted that. And look at this potential damage. I said that you, if you go beyond 1 million potential damage in a, a destroyer, you are the most annoying destroyer out there. You are an annoying ship to play against. 2.5 million. That means 2.5 million uh, damage of ammunition was fired at us. That means everybody was focused on us right there. I and mean, we were just... Man, we were just being that annoying guy that everybody was loved to shoot at, and it allowed our team to just go in and mop up everybody. Uh, man, fire, star, man. Okay, if we're getting 47,000 damage on fires alone, I probably could get this higher, but if we were focused on that, imagine what the hull can do uh, with those big Des Moines caliber guns. I think the, the damage is going to be even greater, and I'm definitely looking forward to that. But as always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support. Let me know your thoughts and uh, about what you saw. And uh, until next time, we'll see you soon. If you see, see me out there, make sure you say Say hi, and we'll see you soon. Be safe. Cheers.